be able to perform exceptionally well, but just at not all the time are they all three of them performing yeah. at the top level. It's about having that coordination and being able to perform during the same games and being able to live up to the expectation. Well, it's time to get on into this series and start to talk about the draft here as it is underway. Sky as a first ban coming out from Team Hazard. I do not understand that ban whatsoever. <laughs> so a lot of that is going to be just targeted at uh, the side of Echo Fox, just not wanting to let that pick through. Obviously, they've been playing against each other. They know what each team has been playing a lot of. And so it, the only reason that you ban away a Sky first is if it is heavily targeted. The Echo Fox ban on Rona is actually even more questionable to me because that then leaves the Black Feather for Team Hazard to grab. And Black Feather is a very strong pick. Uh, I will say that the Rona ban is it, it's specifically against Hazard. This is one of the picks. It was the, the Rona and the Kestrel that they rode all the way through Challengers. They were just dominating everybody with those two picks. So that's why the Rona ban comes through. But again, you have to like, you have to think a little bit more big picture and realize that the Black Feather is still there and you just took away one of the strongest counters to it. Absolutely, and Hazard quite happy to pick that Black Feather up. Obviously, we were talking earlier on today over in Europe and at the start of the pre-show for North America about how Black Feather received a few little nerfs to himself. Obviously, Aftershock got changed as well, which could affect some CP Black Feather players and a couple of the other a couple of the other power picks as well coming on through, like your Rhyme, like your Kestrel. But we saw Black Feather and Rhyme a significant amount over in Europe. So definitely still popular picks here. Another important thing to notice in this draft is that the Lyra gets let through. Lyra was banned in the first ban rotation every single game over in Europe. So the fact that she was let through here just kind of, again, shows the difference in mentality between the European teams and North American teams, even in the challenger level. As Lyra getting the first pick, Reza gonna come through for Echo Fox as well. You gotta figure that's likely to go to Erwin, because he really likes the CP junglers. We've seen him be able to hard carry games with Celeste out of the jungle with the Scarf. Now he's gonna be trying his hands with the Reza, but Team Hazard, obviously now with two picks to try and deal with this. You wonder, is something like the Grace gonna come through to match heal for heal? Do they go for something like the Lance to try and have that lockdown potential? There's a lot of different ways they can go with their next couple picks. It is going to be an alpha, though. So even though the Rona is banned away, or maybe because the Rona is banned away, they're going for this all-in brawl style of engagement. Yes, yeah, super aggression coming on through, and a Lance is definitely going to play into that style as well. Up against that Lyra, we'll see if they can burst through the sustain. But Reza as well, if he can get ahead, could give Alpha a bit of a hard time in terms of the damage he can deal, but if you get to a point where they're even and Alpha can start to get tanky, that is not a fun matchup for the Reza. Yeah, and uh, the Lyra is going to be very crucial to this game because are, is the Lyra going to be enough disengaged? Because obviously Reza, he likes to engage. He likes to be fighting. He doesn't really work that well if he's trying to kite out a team fight. Lyra is very good at kiting, but can also engage extremely heavily as well. So, uh, but if you're engaging into an Alpha Lance Black Feather, you better make sure that you are secure in your positioning and where you're trying to take that fight. Because if you take that fight anywhere near walls or choke points, you are just going to get blown up. All right, Idris going to be the last lock in here for Echo Fox. So you'd assume that that will be a weapon power Idris coming on through mm -hmm. alongside Areza. And that means that they're basically saying to Hazard, We'll take you on in these melee brawls. We are happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in these team fights. Yeah, these are going to be very hectic and chaotic fights. Absolutely. And whichever team can control that chaos is going to be able to come out on top. So, uh, again, where the fights happen are going to be almost as important as who your positioning and who's mm -hmm. engaging during the fight. Uh, if it's in the open, if it's down in the middle of the map, if it's up in the lane... The edge definitely has to go over to the side of Echo Fox, but if these fights are happening in the middle of the jungle, you know, in those choke points, in those tight corridors, all of a sudden you have to figure that the advantage swings the other way because of this Lance pick. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this one will pan out as well, just because we have two very different styles of melee compositions here, where one is very squishy and very high burst damage, the other one less damage, but much more kind of bruises on that side. They'll be able to sustain a lot better during these fights, and we'll see 
which style is going to pay off better as we get on into this one. Are we expect to see one team being more aggressive in the early game? Who's going to set the pace of this game? They're both going to try and set the pace. When you have an aggressive composition, you want to be aggressive from the get-go, and both sides are going to be looking to do that. So I fully expect to see a lot of skirmishes and a lot of fights very early in the game. This could be one of those ones where, you know, five minutes in, you already know who's going to win because the one team just gets every advantage to the early game. Or this could be one of those games that goes to 30 minutes because neither side is able to get a firm foothold on the lead. And that's one of the things that we've been seeing over in Europe earlier today is we saw a lot of the games going where it would be very back and forth for a long portion of the game. And then finally, there's that one team fight around 15 minutes that can lead to a Kraken and that can lead to the game. It's time to get on into this one. Hashtag Vainglory on Twitter. Let us know who you are supporting heading on into this first elimination game of North America. It's time to pass it over to our casters and kick off our games. Bacon, who was looking very tasty today as well. We have Echo Fox versus Team Hazard. And I'm here with Denom Nomine. Denomine, how are you liking these drafts? How are you feeling? Well, I definitely like the Alpha and the Black Feather pair up. It's very dive heavy, also both very good at sustained fights, whereas the Idris we've seen kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, now there have been a couple changes, so maybe Idris can inch his way back in here. But as a weapon, Idris into a Black Feather and an Alpha and a Lance, that just seems like a kind of risky pickup. Kind of a risky pickup, kind of a risky move by Nysa. Early on in the Lance, trying to steal some of the back farm there. He's gonna blow those boots early on here. Quite a long cooldown if he does get into another skirmish. Yeah, it definitely is, but looks like he should be A-OK. -okay. Now, obviously, Echo Fox over here, they have the Lyra, and they have a large early game advantage via this. Obviously, that Imperial Sigil able to heal up the teammates, uh, gonna help Selena Gomez sustain in the lane, and while Hello Kitty and Selena both have that Book of Eulogies, uh, it's obviously... Obviously going to be a clear edge over to the side of Echo Fox. Sorry, I uh, actually unplugged my mic with my foot. <laughs> well played. You're more talented than we knew. Erica, I'm trying to get out of here. You have two lives, but you're in a bad place. Erwin, it's got a lot of damage. Scorcher's there. Erwin, thinking about chasing. Think twice, moving back. Selena needs to get back into the lane. Plus, he's got a rotation maybe to farm up in the jungle if he wants to. Yeah, definitely could be looking to do so. And... The, the nice thing about the side of Hazard is, you know, they are down here in the loser's bracket with Fox right now, um, but they didn't get here by actually uh, losing the Tempo Storm. You know, it was a little bit of a miscommunication last night. They weren't able to get their things together. They've looked very dominant, and they have beat Echo Fox um, every time they've faced each other in the past. So they have to be feeling pretty comfortable going into this matchup because their just history in playing this Fox roster is very positive for themselves. So Hazard, I think, are pretty comfortable, whereas Fox, they've got some fire burning right now, looking for some of that revenge that they haven't been able to pick up on all season. Fire burning. And let's see how it's going to play out here. Now, Erwin taking damage from Erica down in the jungle. They want to fight over this Elder Trant. All the Fox is rotated down, but we still have Hello Kitty up in the lane. Fox surrounding on this Elder Trant. I don't know. Let's see if Nysu maybe wants to go in with an impale. They're a little too late. So nice secure by Fox. Kind of a team rotation there. Yeah, absolutely was, as they take a little bit of a gold lead. They're sitting almost 500 up at this point, and uh, both teams actually did pop a minion candy a minute ago in the lane, so trying to uh, make sure neither team gets a advantage push here. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a level advantage starting for Hello Kitty. It's not major, um, but, you know, if we get a level 6 spike before Idris is able to get his Shimmer Strike, that could definitely be a huge advantage for the side of Hazard as that additional ability to get in and out of combat is so massive for this Black Feather and so desperately needed for this Idris. Now, it's still very close. I mean, it would have to fall kind of into just the right circumstance for anything to happen. Fox need to abuse an early game spike coming out of this Reza uh, when he hits level 6 and picks up that Aftershock. So if Selena hasn't made it there yet, it can be a little bit risky to make an engagement off that. I mean, how do they play that out, though? Because both of these teams have so much mobility. Like, one, it feels like as soon as somebody locks onto a key target, they can the other team can easily lock onto their key target. Well, Jungle the interesting thing about the key targets here is 
everybody in this game is melee, with the exception of Slada, and I guess you could argue Erwin can, uh, Erwin and Selena Gomez have a little bit more poke than uh, Erica Kane and Hello Kitty, but it's still two dive-heavy compositions that are very sustain-heavy on each side. So, uh, for example, the Idris is going to be going towards probably the Sorrow Blade, uh, Poison Shiv, and the Breaking Point build. Um, whereas Hello Kitty is going to be going towards the Serpent's Mask, uh, the Breaking Point, and then maybe into uh, a Sorrow Blade after that. So, uh, not quite the expected build path, because we'd like to see that Poison Shift come out uh, to counteract some of the healing that Slata is able to provide. Right. Uh, with the Serpent's Mask already picked up, that Vampirism does not stack. So you would actually be losing out on a little bit of your gold value by picking up those two items. Yeah, then we probably don't uh, expect to see that happening here. Impale up in the lane, Selena taking a little damage. Hello Kitty jumps in, pops in, but Selena's doing okay. Has uh, the heal coming out of the sigil. Erwin up in the lane, he just kind of jumps in. Troublemaker, Scorcher, look for the combo and just... Man, that burst damage is actually starting to come out. Now he has that aftershock, that was the power spike you were talking about just a moment ago. And we can see it going to work up here in the lane. Naisu does not have a fountain yet, so Fox can apply a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, they absolutely can, and as well as, again, that Imperial Sigil use coming out of Lyra, even if the Fountain is down, you have a little bit of extra move speed and healing that you can fall back on. Now, the difference is, is you don't have that potential for a three-man stun that Nice Shot has on this here Lance with that Githian Wall, especially if we get late enough into the game that an Echo is acquired, where he can really start to uh, change the way that Fox are able to interact. Again, both are dive compositions, but... Oh, hold on. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Didn't end up getting as exciting as I was hoping it was going to, but uh, everybody gonna make it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, if Fox, you know, again, it is all melee, they do have to dive in to get their damage down, and if they're fighting around a, a, a obstacle, then it makes it very easy for Nice Shot. Ooh, Erwin kind of baiting the fight out here. Bright Bulwark goes down. Selena on the target. The Shimmer striking back instead of before. It realizes not quite ready to dive just yet. Both teams resetting the lane, but there's Erica moving in the Prime Directive. An Impale lands on a Selena. Selena, come trade. What's the damage here? Netherform Detonator comes down on top, but they've lost Selena. Nice fight from Hazard. Can they find some more after this first blood? Can they take an objective? Can they find another kill? The, the, the big heals coming out of Slater. This is so beautiful. That Bright Bulwark actually used twice through this fight. And that's actually a really big tool to counter or out the mobility that's coming out of Hazard. A nice prime directive over almost catching Erwin there. See Erica really playing aggressively on this alpha. Yeah, they both have useful tools into each other. I feel just the Lance, because it's an actual stun, is a little bit more reliable and a little bit easier to pull off. Uh, especially since the cooldown is much lower than that of Bright Bulwark. But Slata has already picked up this Crucible and it's going to do a couple things for them. It is going to give him a little bit of additional healing on that Imperial Sigil, as well as he can potentially help the team block up that triple stun scenario mm -hmm. uh, that we talked about a little bit there. So that's... You know, they're they're doing well building around what they need to do to counter each other. And it's going to make it for very interesting fights as the game goes on. Again, they are going to be probably long drawn out fights unless if one team is able to really take an advantage here early. Yeah, it, it really does feel like it's it's going to come down to just landing some key skill shots. Now, Prime Directive does miss, but the core charge is there. Selena just jumps back. A nice little shroud step, of course, building up his weapon power, unlocking the di Divergent Path. He's a lot more mobile and can kind of get out of those situations. It feels like, at this point, Hazard starting to apply a little bit more pressure than we've seen in the first eight minutes as they're bearing down onto this uh, first turret here. But now dropping down into the jungle. They know where Selena is? That, oh, that scout trap! What a godly scout trap! Nice get the wall and Selena gets wrecked! I think Naisu picks it up with the scout trap. Oh, it's so calculated. Yeah, that was a beautiful rotation coming out of Hazard there. They pick up a second kill onto Selena Gomez, who rotated down and stopped again. But let's be real. That, that's a bad miss. Like, you gotta clear those traps out. Can't just have Selena, the only one doing it. I mean, he can't do that with his life. They're fighting. They're under the turret here. Denominate. 
Can Hazard find another kill? Hello Kitty dropping low. The healing blast coming out here. Nice Zeus still holding the fountain. Moves for combat roll. Get the end wall. Buying a little bit of time. That's the fountain coming out. Now Prime Directive right back in. Hello Kitty in as well. He's gonna miss with the on point. No, he landed that. Rose of Princeton in. Shimmer Strike buying a little bit of time. These team dancing around. You talked about long drawn out fights. Yes, they are. Erica moves in. Finding one kill. Hello Kitty looking for another. Erica with the Prime Directive termination protocol. He'll get it. Doesn't even need the ult. That'll put him up four to zero. The turret will take down Erica. Echo Fox able to get on the board, but just a kind of a bloodbath up in the lane here. Now Hazard still trying to take this turret down. Looks like they're going to do so. Hello Kitty, nice and low, but the turret goes down. Yeah, it was nice that Fox were able to pick up a single kill there, but that gold went on to Slata, and they were able to get it with the turret. I mean, it wasn't clean by any means. Uh, trading one kill for three kills and a turret. Uh, Hazard wins that one all day, and this could be the start of that moment where we talked about if one team is able to win a fight early and take a advantage, then they can start to close down the time on the fights uh, if they're able to uh, keep that kind of pressure up. And while it's only a small gold lead right now, we're only sitting about one and a half thousand gold, with that first objective down, it gives them a lot more room for error. They have a lot more comfortable room where if they find a fight in the lane, Lane, it's so much further back for the side of Echo Fox to run to safety. It's a lot of damage able to come out here right now. Erwin getting a feel for that. On point won't connect. Erwin getting a bit of healing from that sigil now. So you want to jump in and looking to poke that aftershock. Go to work here. Bulwark's down. Prime Direction is not going to connect the way Erica would have liked it. Hazard, they have control of the tri rush. They have control over the gold miner at this point. They're kind of setting the pace here. As we start to approach the early mid-game, Echo Fox maybe trying to make a move. There's a lot of lane minions on their side. I think they're just trying to take advantage of that fact, but I don't know if they want to actually get in and take a fight here. It looks like they're just going to back off. Yeah, it could be a little bit risky to take a fight if you're not quite ready for it. Erica Kane right now is quite low, as well as Erwin has a little bit of health missing, but... I'm tilted. This is a key moment for Erwin here, is he has the Aftershock and the Dragon's Eye, and this is where he's going to start to be able to ramp up that damage in the fight and really start to use those long-winded fight to his advantage. But the same can also be said about Erica Kane, who has the Dragon's Eye, and Hello Kitty, who has picked up the uh, Breaking Point. So you have to give a little bit of an edge right now to Hazard. They're a little up in gold, and based on the length of that last fight, you have to imagine that Hazard is just going to be able to scale up a little bit better as the fight goes on. Oh, yeah. As well as they execute damage that comes out of Hello Kitty. When the health bars start getting lower, do that missing uh, missing percent of health damage. Let's find out right now. Now, Prime Directive coming out here, forcing the Termination Protocol. Erica not having the fight he would have liked here. Selena, can you get on target? Summer Strike buying a little bit of time here. Erica getting taken out early in this fight. Echo Fox have the advantage they wanted. Hello Kitty trying to build up some breaking point stacks. Realizes he doesn't want to take this fight. Erwin's low on energy, maybe the saving grace for Hazard here. Nicely trying to get in position to be the front line for his team. Bull works down. Nice! Get the end wall, but the Netherform detonator dodges it out. Echo Fox find one, looking for Naisu. Ace. That's the ace right as Erica's respawning. A little bit sloppy in the beginning, but Fox coming through with a big team fight win. Yeah, they did absolutely great there. And one of the key things about that fight, you know, we were just talking about how Hazard should have the edge. Erica Kane and Nice Shot went in before Hello Kitty was even part of that fight. So there was a good bit of time that Fox were able to get a good bit of damage down, as you mentioned, forcing out that uh, termination protocol. And, you know, as we get into this replay, it was just a matter of time. You know, the chase coming out of this Reza and Idris just Ace. ended up being a little bit too much for Hazard to get away with. And, and you have to come together and fight these fights uh, smart, you know, again, uh, they had an edge in their builds and in favor in how a team fight would have gone, but because that that cooldown was burned out of Erica Kane, that that lifeline was burnt out of Erica Kane so early, Fox were able to just push for a clean ace and pick up some objectives themselves and take a little bit of a gold lead for themselves, about 500. So a nice fight from Echo Fox. One thing though, Dave, that's got me a little tilted is that that scout trap down in the in the bottom shot brush there. They killed, allowed the hazard to kill Echo uh, Fox's carry. Selena, when he just walked down to shop earlier, all three of Echo Fox have walked through there multiple times, and they still haven't cleared that out yet. Hopefully, it doesn't come back to bite them in the butt. 
Yeah, definitely can. You know, that's one of those key uh, scout traps that you really have to look out for. It's a little bit out of the way. And, and the key thing is that it's just slightly out of where your your hero's auto pathing is going to be. Like, unless if you're walking all the way from that swooped underside, going to the shop, you're almost never going to touch that specific spot unless if you actively do it yourself. And that's kind of the whole uh, point of that scout trap there is the more times enemies pass it, the more vision you get for that gold value, the more effective that 50 gold has become for you. Even if it doesn't help you get a kill, even if you don't find a fight off the back of it, just knowing where the enemy team is for a split second can give you a little bit of safe and clear mind on your rotation and how to plan ahead. Exactly, and Hazard has done a great job, but we're tied up 4-4. Four, four. Overall net worth almost dead even, 14 and a half minutes in. We're gonna have Kraken spawning very soon. So whichever team can take a nice fight here, so this next fight is going to be very big. It's probably going to be a couple turrets coming through with the pusher. Now, Impale will miss. The Prime Directive is in. Erwin trying to dodge back, getting a little healing from Slata. Erwin dropping low, but he's taking Area Cocaine down as well. But the Termination Protocol is still there. Erwin stands his ground. Fountains come out. Shimmer Strike from Selena Gomez dancing around the fight as Erwin gets taken down. Eric Cocaine in that reboot. He actually reboots right there. That's not good for Echo Fox. Now, Selena, he'll get that sigil and oh, get himself back Slater. with the Strauss up there. Kaidi back with Hello Kitty can chase him down. Massive mobility coming out here you cannot run really from this hazard lineup and this is echo fox losing too yeah slata actually did a great job saving selena there for a second it wasn't quite enough the chase coming out of black feather is just so good and with both carries down now erwin just coming back onto the fold selena down for 10 seconds this should easily be a kraken going over to hazard uncontested lyra is coming but not quick enough and you know, like you mentioned, this could result in a couple turret push if they play it correctly. And again, when Hazard fights as a team, they have the better composition to win the team fights at this stage of the game. And it's really looking good for them in their positioning. But, you know, again, only when they fight together. If someone goes in a little bit too soon, it's very easy for Erwin and Selena to blow a individual target out. Yes, so once they execute as intended, they will do just fine. They have thus far. Now Kraken is onto the turret. Echo Fox begins to chip away. See how Hazard want to play this out. Erwin just trying to get that Scorcher down. Nice little double stun there coming out of Naisu. Naisu! And the uh, Scout Traps go down. Everything in the kitchen sink being thrown at the Kraken and Hazard here coming out of Echo Fox. Slata doing his best. He's rooted up here. See Naisu lining up for a nice impale, but this is Alpha jumping in very deep. Not too scared as this turret's just getting melted down. Choke point turret down. A two easy, uh, two easy turrets on this push here. Nice two. Combat roll over the wall. Looked like maybe he was gonna go for some more, but that'll be uh about all they take on this push. Yeah, I think it does a little bit of just poking your head out, seeing if you could catch a target and try to get a kill there. They weren't able to find it, so they do the smart thing, they rotate through. Uh, I'm a little shocked they didn't take the jungle rotation. They only take a half rotation, or maybe not even that, just the uh Ventry. Yeah. But overall, you know, that's a win there for the side of hazard. They now only have you know, the better part of a, a turret and a half to go through to end this game. So if they find themselves in a situation where they kill both Erwin and Selena Gomez, they can look to just clearly end out the game. Or if we get into a situation where they get another Kraken push, all they really have to do is not die, right? Like a Kraken by itself is easily able to push down two turrets. And, you know, with your whole team there, it's it's quite easy to push them down as well. But again, the whole situation is just don't die. You need to take Fox's focus off of that Kraken and, you know, kind of do a little bit of chip damage here when you can, and then just all in the Vein Crystal once that turret is down. Let's see if they're going to be able to find the big plays that they need to early on here. It'd be a nice way to set the pace in, uh, in this series, you know? You want to come out, kind of just throw the punches at your opponents and uh, get them on the back foot. Now, Hazard, you're in a great place right here, 18 minutes in, just waiting maybe for that Kraken spawn out on the map again. Uh, any big items that have come out since you kind of touched on them? I'm not really seeing too much across the board. I mean, Erwin, uh, or I mean, Selena now has this breaking point, but I haven't seen it really go to work in these fights. 
We, we have it, and the real big purchase, the one that's having an effect on the way these fights are going to go, is looking over at Nice Shot. He's picked up that Echo, where he can then get that double Githy in the wall. Whereas Slata, he has picked up a Contraption, he has picked up War Treads. That is going to give them a little bit more escape or engage, depending on how they need it. Uh, a little bit more healing on that Imperial Sigil, as well as a, a additional source of vision. However, you don't have to continuously buy Flares. But it is on a cooldown. As we can see right now, you know, there's four seconds that he could not use a flare or a scout trap. And four seconds, that's a long time when these team fights are only, you know, 15, 10, 15 seconds long. I mean, you're talking about a third of a fight, you know, that could have been avoided with one scout trap. That's very true. I mean, you kind of have to weigh the cost benefit there. Obviously, Slater doing a pretty good job. I mean, he's starting to move his vision lane forward a little bit. As I say, this hazard moves through the, the upper mustache brushes and kind of clearing out a little bit of vision. But as long as Slater can kind of hold down at least their tri brush, it feels like a win. Yeah, absolutely. And again, at this stage of the game, it's it's all about hazard making the engage. Here we Boom! go. Boom! Hazard making the engage. Erica's in with that prime directed now. Erwin stunned up. The Githian wall coming out here. Nice. You making the big plays. And that'll be Selena Gomez going down next as Hazard turn up and melt Echo Fox. Slata takes an arcane passage and Hazard are happy to take a free ride on Ace. through. 1,374 damage on that execute and the ace for Hazard is they're going to take game one. Yeah, Hazard, this was that team storming through the Challenger series. They were able to uh, fall a little bit shy. They did come in second place to Vision, but they still had a strong performance even then. And, uh, you know, again, they are a team that did beat Echo Fox at all of their run-ins. So they have to be feeling quite confident in this situation. And now being a game up in this best of five, they're only two victories away from moving themselves into uh, into a much closer position. Again, their loss to Tempo Storm last night does put them a step away from possibly getting into the uh, Inward 8, but definitely a team that when they come together, they can do so. Yeah, they really did. This is, uh, this is impressive stuff. I know I got to see Hazard play a little bit and I expect them to come out and have a good game, but they just look really dominant here. I never saw Echo Fox composition really coming together. There were moments, I think, you know, you talk about those power spikes uh, out of Irwin, of course, on the Reza. He did uh, pretty good work there, but it did fall off through the mid game. They couldn't close out on it. And uh, in the end, just Echo Fox falling a little bit flat there. Uh, I don't know, you know, it could be a, a draft thing, uh, but it, it... I, I think the Lance was a little bit easier to execute on, just... Yes, the Lyra can prevent some of that disengage, but when you're in the actual brunt of a fight, the potential to get that double stun, that double team-wide stun from Lance is just too easy. Yeah, that was uh, some really nice Skiffy and Walls coming out. Well, we'll see uh, what Tasty Bacon and Munchables have to say about this one. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, fantastic start to the series coming on through here. And honestly, not a good start if you're an Echo Fox fan at home. It felt like once these compositions came online, the tankier bruises really kind of had a way with the Assassins. Yeah, it was just a much easier to execute. Uh, even though they were both kind of going for a very similar play style, it was definitely a bit easier to execute on the side of Hazard. Not to mention the fact that priority target focus is another issue that I think we're, we're going to have to talk about as we take a look at the replays of this game. And so many times, the members of Echo Fox were trying to focus down this alpha. That's the most difficult target to actually take down because you have to go through so much health to do so. And while they were trying to focus the alpha, Blackfeather was just running wild. Yeah. Yeah, Blackfeather could just do whatever he wanted during those fights, and we saw that that gradually started to turn the tides in favor of Hazard. Let's take a look at the uh, replays from this one, starting with the first blood at around six minutes. Yeah, and right off the bat, again, both teams were fairly aggressive, were looking for opportunities for themselves to get advantages early on, and uh, it, it took a little while. You know, there was some skirmishing, some really strong movements through the jungle as well, but eventually the all-in engage, and you can see the team move as one, which was really fun to watch. Whenever the Lance and Pale comes through, all of a sudden you have Blackfeather and Alpha both collapsing at the exact same time. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about that coordination between these teams, and you can see the team fights were already getting messy early on in the game, but the first blood ended up going the way of Hazard in the end, and then 
just a little bit later, they managed to turn that into another double kill. Yeah, and the, the pressure that they're applying, the continued pressure, even after they got that first blood, you know, this fight could have easily just backed off. They lasted long enough for the Idris to respawn and come back and join the fight, and they're still just looking to engage. So the, the extended duration, the focus for this long of a period of time for the side of Team Hazard to go that long underneath the opponent's turrets, so much pressure being applied and not to falter, not to like, you know, break your step and make a big mistake there is really impressive to watch. Yeah, really well juggled aggro from the turret as well, making sure that they're not just soaking up shot after shot and that damage obviously builds up each and every single shot. We can take a look in the next replay as well, which was actually a sign of life coming out from Echo Fox as they managed to win a fight for themselves. Yeah, I mean, Echo Fox, they're still not a not a pushover of a team, and even though Hazard was looking very strong. This time they caught Alpha out, and you know, when you have a target isolated like that, feel free to focus them. That's the type of situation where you can choose, you know, whichever target doesn't matter who they are because you have them isolated and they took down that one kill. Once they solidified a single kill, all of a sudden this composition is no longer anywhere near as strong for the side of Hazard. So they were able to con just chase on through and look to pick up this Black Feather despite some amazing plays coming out of Nice Who Shot on this Lance, keeping the team at bay. I mean, this was a long time for them to get the A's. Almost didn't get the A's because it took so long to get the other two kills after the alpha fell. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic job, though, coming out from Echo Fox to at least win out that fight for themselves. But in the end, it was Hazard that managed to take this one. And we could take a look at the winning moments of this game as well, as Hazard managed to push this one through into a victory in the end alongside a Kraken. And this is typically what we see once we get past that 15-minute point. Whoever can win out these fights can win out the game. Yeah, and this was where one of those big examples of what we were talking about with the target focus came through. There's so much attention being paid to Alpha. They got her into the infinite reboot, but Blackfeather is still almost full health at this stage of the team fight. There was just no focus onto the Blackfeather whatsoever. And Hello Kitty was able to just freely move about these fights, find these objectives. And you know, you said when the Kraken comes out, you can win a fight and just win the game off of that. They didn't even need the Kraken at this point. They got the ace. They recognized that the death timers were going to be long enough that they could just march in with the ace buff minions and look to finish the game. Yeah, absolutely. And finish the game they did. Hazard now 1-0 up in this series. It is a best of five. There is plenty of time for Echo Fox to pull themselves back into this one. But we need to get on into game two and start to talk about the draft and what Echo Fox can do to fix this situation. I feel like this full assassin composition didn't really work out, especially when it was an all melee matchup. Yeah, and the Rona again, Rona's going to be permanently banned in this series uh, by Echo Fox because Team Hazard has just proven to be so incredibly talented with that hero throughout the challengers. So they answer actually with the Black Feather ban of their own, saying, you know, if the Rona's not on the board, Black Feather then becomes too strong to allow anyone to get. So all of the captains going to be available here for these first couple of selections. We could see that Lyra come out once again. It is going to be an Arden priority, though, for the side of Echo Fox. Absolutely. Arden will be the first lock in here for Echo Fox. Definitely a safe pickup to start off the draft. And Arden has been one of the most heavily prioritized captains of the last few months, honestly. It feels like we barely see a draft that Arden isn't one of those priority picks coming on through. But has it now? Have to decide where they want to go. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Lyra coming on in. Yeah, I mean, Arden, he did get nerfed a little bit in update 2.10, but it was not a massively significant nerf. It just changed the how much healing he gets every time he takes damage. Obviously, a little bit lower than what it used to be, but that still leaves him as a very strong hero. Uh, still has a so much health. It can just focus on building health. The double gauntlet plays are still absolutely game-defining at times, so that's why Arden is still remaining as a priority despite getting a little bit of a nerf to him in this update. But Lyra, very, very strong this update with the health bonuses coming through, with the items providing more health, and now the echo changes as well. That all helped Lyra out because now the echo on, you can use it on the double sigils now and have such a short cooldown yeah. on the echo that you can constantly just throw out double sigils and heal your team for so much. Fortress going to be banned away here. This is a pick that we saw against Lyra early on today over in Europe. And it was, uh, uh, it, it wasn't actually a successful pick over in Europe, but we saw it banned as well against that Lyra. Kestrel actually taken off the board by Echo Fox, so maybe 
Something that they're just afraid of as a comfort pick for Hazard. It, it's, it's exactly that. It's the Rona and the Kestrel is what Hazard was running all season long. They've looked absolutely dominant with those two heroes. So this is just Echo Fox knowing what Hazard likes to play and trying to take that away, trying to make them you know, play on not necessarily uncomfortable picks, but knowing that if they let them get those two through, they're very likely to end up dropping the game. And so they want to just be as safe as they possibly can. But uh, with Hazard locking in the Vox, there's still a lot of ways that they can go with their composition. You know, Vox is one of those heroes that even though you know it's going to the lane, it doesn't really give away that much because you can play a hard engage style. You can play a more, you know, kite until you feel strong enough and then engage style with a Vox Lyra, especially as your duo. So with the alpha coming through, this is going to be maybe Echo Fox looking for a hard engage of their own once again. Yeah, maybe deciding that this time around they're the ones that want the bruises. Blackfeather was banned away though, so they can't completely steal away the composition that we saw out of Hazard. And it will be a petal as the final lock-in coming on through here. Yeah, very likely to be that weapon pedal up in the lane. Not going to be relying on the Munions for damage. Or it could end up being a crystal, uh, crystal petal up in the lane with a weapon alpha, though that would be a little bit unconventional. We have seen weapon alpha though this season. And we've seen it do well, but it, it's so much more likely to be the yeah, weapon pedal. That seems pretty unlikely that we'd see that one coming out. Krull will be the final lock-in here, coming out from Team Hazard. So, I mean, the, the Crystal Battle would do well in that matchup, but it's just the alpha in lane that I'm not 100% convinced <laughs> by in that scenario. It wouldn't Fox have to be in the lane. It, it, be a, to it could be, be a crystal petal in the lane. Anyway, I think it's but... fairly safe to assume it is the weapon yeah. pedal going into the lane on this one. So what are we expecting out of the early game here? How does the alpha match up against a Krull? Kroll wins that matchup every single time. There is no instance in which an alpha should be able to out-duel a Kroll in the jungle unless she has help and Kroll's team does not rotate. It, that's the only time that alpha wins this one out. So I fully expect that the side of Hazard is going to be very aggressive early on in the jungle and Echo Fox is going to have to be aware of this and they're going to have to be very quick to rotate the pedal down into the jungle to help out. All right, so they have pressure in the early game then. Is it an issue that they are double weapon power right here with a crawl and a Fox on their side? Do they have to... Are, are they kind of on a time limit for this game? They are in a sense. If they don't get a massive lead in the early game, then all of a sudden that weapon pedal is going to be coming through in the end and just deleting this Vox before the stacks can even build up. And both, again, Vox and Kroll are going to be relying on getting those stacks built up. All right, well, we'll see if Hazard can get that tempo going for themselves early on in the game or whether Echo Fox are going to be able to grab this one later on. It's time to get on into this one. Hashtag Banglory on Twitter. Let us know who you are supporting. It's time to pass it back over to our casters. It is Humanist and Denomine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game two between Echo Fox and Team Hazard. This is surely going to be a great matchup here. Denominate, how are you liking these drafts? I feel like Team Hazard have put together something pretty special. I think Team Hazard has put something together pretty special, but we've seen all too many times what this weapon power pedal can do in the lane. Now, it's not one of Selena's comfort picks, though, and that's kind of... Uh, my one downfall that I always have with Fox is Selena is a fantastic player, but has what many would consider to be a very limited uh, hero pool in what he's comfortable playing. Now, the pedal is a strong pick that uh, throughout pretty much all game will just outrange and out damage this Fox. Uh, Fox might have a little bit of a damage edge early, but uh, definitely going to suffer from that range. So the more attacks pedal is able to get out, the better off she's going to be. Uh, and it's requiring Hazard to just make good dives constantly. And that's going to be Fox picking up their first uh, slight win there. A slight win indeed. Nothing to taunt about, but I'm sure it feel, feels good for Fox. Selena will move right back into the lane as well. Hello Kitty and Naisu uh, get right back into the lane. They're going to farm away. Pretty big waves stacked up here for each other, but yeah, I'm excited to see what Selena can do on uh, on this weapon pedal now. Uh, as I'm watching these weapon pedals, it does feel like it takes a while to come online. I mean, you said he's going to outrange the box through a lot of the game, but will he be able to actually outduel the box? Uh, it just depends on their position. If Petal starts off the fight at a large range away from Box, it should be very easy for her to kite him out. 
and uh, obviously with the overdriven trampoline, that is going to be a 20% burst to that weapon power for a couple seconds, uh, as well as a little bit of an increased attack range as well. So the more attacks pedal gets out during that empowered time, the more damage he's going to do, and that's why we typically see those builds on the pedals that's you know, something along the lines of Sorrow Blade, Tornado Trigger, Tornado Trigger, maybe a monocle for that fourth offensive item. And they just look for that raw crit damage that comes out multiple times at a much safer distance. It feels like it's going to be dangerous. I'm actually really curious to see how Naisu uses those arcane passages, you know, maybe take it as a just a, a, a transportation tool right onto the pedal, put that bulwark down and, and just let the Vox and Pro go to town. Uh, there was a nice rotation actually from Hazard just previously here. This is going to be uh, Selena boarding back, but Hazard just shoved the lane out so incredibly quickly. They drop down, take the Elder Treant, super smooth, and they're right back before the lane even pushes. Yeah, and you know, despite Fox taking that first Elder Treant, it's Hazard that have developed a slight gold lead based on the rotation, as you mentioned, both for the ambient share as well as taking on that Treant. Now, Eric Kane's found some Erwin action, but does she want it? Well, let's see. I don't know. Erwin gets that Vanguard trying to move back. A lot of weakness stacks applied. Uh, it's going to be okay. Erica holding that Spectral Smite there. Nice zoom. Moves right back up into the lane. Wants to stay with Hello Kitty. Red Directive in here. Selena jumping for the trampoline, but there's nothing to be found. It's too early to be playing games like that. We're not even four minutes in. Jungle is not even intense yet. Not intense yet, but Hello Kitty has intensified the build with that Poison Ship. It's going to get the build. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to tried to play it off there. It flopped pretty hard. But I liked it. <laughs> Poison ship gonna help sustain the lane as well and use some of the barrier is what's kind of important to me of Slata as well as that fountain. But also a slight amount of healing that comes out of the uh, out of the pedal that spontaneous combustion. It is a weapon pedal, it's not gonna be some massive spikes of healing. But so anything much healing you can cut I mean, how many times do we see people make it out on, you know, sub-50 health? I mean, that could be the difference in a fight. So we'll, ha we'll have to see it if could. we're able to... Uh... Laugh about it. Yeah? Yeah. We'll see. This one time, but a lot of times with this, this weapon pedal, and I, especially this game with the box, you feel like those are going to get cleared out, but you never know when those can come through. And you're right, we have to keep it in mind. Now, Selena Gomez going with the Bonesaw first item. Hmm, this is interesting. Let's talk about it. Well, the uh, the Bonesaw is a very interesting one. I, I, it's, it's actually really interesting. So it does have the attack speed that we kind of talked about earlier, where the pedal, the more attack she can get out while she's empowered, the more damage she'll do. But starting off with the Bonesaw seems like probably the the least power spiky item you could have gone first. Uh, you know, typically you want to see that Sorrow Blade, um, just because, again, it's additional 20% weapon power uh, on each of your attacks. When you don't have weapon power, you don't gain a whole lot off of that 20%. So that's kind of uh, a little bit of a miss coming out of Fox. Yeah, maybe strategically he's just waiting for that big power spike. Going to throw Hazard uh, off guard here and then strike when the iron is hot. Five... Maybe in about five minutes when he completes the next item here. We'll see how it's going to play out now. Erwin jumping forward. He's starting to come into his zone on the south and there's no aftershock <laughs> just yet. You imagine he's going to pick that up as he's looking to port back, but nice who trolling him out there. Down in the jungle, Crystal Sentry taking out. Erica able to do it by himself. This Kroll just doing work here. Yeah, Kroll doing a great job and, you know, that's kind of the nice thing about this Kroll into the Alpha. They're both very in-your-face sustainy heroes. The Alpha does provide a little bit of burst uh, over what the Kroll can do, but the Kroll is good at shutting down an enemy. You know, the Kroll is a key buffer. He has, uh, obviously, the slow with the Shadows Empower Me, his heroic perk. He has the stun that comes out of his From Hell's Heart. And obviously those weakness stacks able to cut damage down to almost 50% when it max stacks and be very uh, impactful on a fight. I mean, you know, think about think about the amount of damage that an alpha can do with that termination protocol. Well, n now it's gone off at 50% damage. Yes, it's still a lot, but it didn't wipe your team like oh, yeah. we've seen so many times before. Absolutely. I mean, it's huge utility. And of course, when you start becoming that offensive presence, just all the better. Erica in a great place. He's gonna pick up a weapon infusion. It's uh, sitting, sitting in his pocket right now. 
holding down that tribe brush here. It's Naisu and Hello Kitty have control in the lane now. Er Erica's been powered up down in the jungle. He's gonna find Erwin. The Crystal Sentry is here as well. They're actually fighting up in the lane as well. We'll move back there. From Hell's Heart comes through onto Erwin. Termination protocol activated. And the lane fight still going. This is Erica locked onto Erwin. Is it going to reboot? Nope, he's taken down. Erica's going to get the kill. That's the first blood seven minutes in. And his second Crystal Sentry coming through as well. Now, Arcane Passage up in the lane. The break will work down immediately. Selena. Feeling threatened, but Naisu, you're in a bad place. Hello Kitty didn't follow through. Turret shot coming through. A lot of damage on a Naisu, but he will be okay. And first blood going onto this Krull is going to accelerate this Krull, who normally takes a uh, pretty substantial amount of time to ramp up uh, and, and get him online much sooner. And going into a Petal, who has that Bonesaw first item, and is now split up the build so much. I mean, uh, hold on here. Oh, uh, Erica's committed in. That's a healing blast. That is the gauntlet down, though. Nice to stunned up. Hello Kitty trapped, uh, trapped inside, getting shot down by Erwin. One more core charge. We'll take him down. There you go. Erica moves in. He'll find Selena. So this is now a two versus two. Nice to kind of... Uh, disjointed as far as the movement with Erica. Nice break will work down. Erica moving back in. Ted Man's rush. Prime Directive doesn't connect. Sigil's down. There's the From Hell start. Erica really wants to play some Vainglory. Yeah, definitely does. Looking to be aggressive against Erwin. In that 1v1 or 2v2 trade, the Kroll should win that out almost every single time, but because of the proximity to the turret, as well as uh, the substantial health bonus that uh, Erwin had over Erica Kane in that last fight, uh, it was kind of difficult to stick around. I mean, you could get a couple of hits on Erwin here and there, but then he would duck behind the turret. Um, looking back over at Sydney Gomez's build, though, so we, ha we had that uh, breaking point, our uh, bone saw picked up first. Look how long it's taking now to get uh -oh. a second tier three. It looks like we do have a little bit of a disconnect here. Uh, but as you were saying about the tier three. Yeah, I mean, we're we're nine minutes into this game and Selena is still not at that second tier three item, whereas Hello Kitty already has that complete and is going to begin working into a defensive item and with a tier two uh, kinetic shield there already. Um, you can definitely see the little bit of the gold advantage starting to develop across these builds. Uh, and that's because Selena Gomez, instead of going directly into the Sorrow Blade, also has this lucky strike, which has put his damage spike off, you know, another, you know, couple minutes because of that, uh, you know, because of the rotation that he's going to now have to make. He's only 300 gold away from that Sorrow Blade, but he also has to find a position where he's able to safely rotate back and if you don't have the damage, it's going to make it very easy for this Vox, Lyra, and Kroll to push in objectives on you. A. Denomini. Instead of a bunch of little power spikes, Selena's more going for the one mega power spike to win the game. We have to, we have to believe uh, in Selena Gomez at this point. Also, now, I'm pretty out of the loop on this one, but I was thinking about this one. We're we sure it's Eric Akane? Could it be Eric Akane? Eric, uh, Eric Akane? I'm, I'm sure it could. I'm sure it could. Do I think it is? I, I haven't been saying it all season, so I'm going to stick with my gut. <laughs> stick with your gut. No, that's a fair deal. I think uh, maybe we could learn a thing or two from uh, from chat. They could let us know. But as far as this game goes, I mean, this is game two where we're fresh into the series. So just uh, a bit a bit of a technical uh, difficulty for Hello Kitty, and we'll get back into this in a second. But... Looks like Echo Fox, you know, they're not playing like they're down and out. They're still bringing it to Hazard, but Hazard kind of just one step ahead. And I I, I got to give all the credit over to Eric. Eric. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, maybe we can ask in chat after and, and see what it is. But until then, until then, it is Eric Kane or Eric a Kane. On maybe the, maybe uh, on yeah, the press one for Erica, press two for Eric. And then we'll I mean. We talked about this before. The humanist just can't get the hype built up without his ones and twos in chat. <laughs> nah, it empowers me, just like shadows and power troll. <laughs> okay, don't know if that one landed. Um, uh, so we're seeing uh, Eric's probably going to be going for the the bone saw next. I like this. It, it's going to be a good pickup with as far as synergy with their composition, and it's going to enable him to just go even harder. On, uh, on objectives and just amplifying damage. 
Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, that Kroll is going to be looking to attack a single target consecutively to build up those weakness stacks. It pairs up very well with the Bone Saw because they are a double weapon power composition. And, you know, right around the same time that you get into the uh, the max weakness stacks, you have about the same amount of uh, breaking or uh, uh, Bone Saw stacks as well, which is essentially max. So that's kind of where your spike really begins. You've now opened up a large window of damage that your team can put onto that target and have chunked down a lot of what they are able to output returning onto you. It looks like a uh, word coming in from production is going to let us know that we should be uh, getting back into the game in uh, just a moment. So we got a Hello Kitty actually resolving solution and uh, we'll be get, getting back in the game pretty soon. But I mean, Denominate, how do we expect this game to play out? I mean, Hazard have the advantage right now. Are they going to keep the pedal down? What can Echo Fox do? Well, if, if Echo Fox wants to stand a real chance left in this game, they need to get this pedal online uh, and get some uh, critical damage more specifically. So probably at this point, uh, looking for a Tornado Trigger and a Tyrant's Monocle after the Sorrow Blade is complete. And that's where they're going to look again, just to outrange that Vox. Even if the Kroll is coming, diving on in, they can force out essentially all of the utility coming out of uh, coming out of the Lyra very early on in the fight. If you hit Vox for, you know, three, four, five hundred damage uh, spikes, it's going to make it a very uncomfortable position for him to try to close that gap. <laughs> I'd uh, be uncomfortable indeed, but I'm thinking if Hello Kitty gets on to Selena Gomez, he's going to blow this pedal up. There's no defense on this pedal. Not going to expect it on a weapon pedal playing from behind. Right now, Hazard kind of started up the gold miner and rethink things, moving it into the lane very quickly. Hello Kitty making that decision. Just kind of stop the wave, not allow that uh, lane wave to push up. Now, Echo Fox, it, it, kind of, it feels like they're looking for a fight, but flares spot them out, and they're not going to take any super aggressive engagements right now. No, absolutely not. You know, with the subjective advantage that's come out for Hazard, they're kind of in control of what Echo Fox is allowed to do as long as they keep that aggression up. But Fox is doing the right thing here. They are trying to get some of that ambient gold and experience onto Selena so he can start completing what is a very expensive build actually on the pedal. And, uh, you know, as we talked about it earlier, Selena is almost at the gold required for that Sorrow Blade but still has to actually make a rotation to shop. If, uh, you know, he is going to recall now, but if a fight were to break out, you know, each is Slate is getting lit up down in the anything. jungle. Oh, he's going to be okay. Never mind. It's it's a Kroll and an Arden. I, yeah, but this is a Kroll with a breaking point who's caught him out completely by himself. I mean, if he does get collapsed on uh, by the rest of Hazard, there's definitely a chance he could have gone down. It is Goldminer getting lit up, though. Echo Fox realized what's going on. Erwin, how are you going to play this one out? He's going to move in. All right, Bulwark, Bulwark will be coming down, but the gauntlet as well. Goldminer dropping low is actually Selena Gomez able to capture that 400 gold each. Now, the fight is on. Echo Fox kiting back. There's the trampoline. He's buffed up. Selena doing pretty good damage. Hello Kitty trying to get on the target. He'll go ahead and move back. Healing Flask and a Fountain comes out. Hazard, they're feeling good, but this is Kroll getting in. Erica moving in deep and aggressively. Prime Directive right back in. Erwin really wants to play some games. Erwin taking Erica down low, but Erica's so incredibly durable. The Sigil comes out, keeping Hazard alive. Selena dropping low. Spontaneous combustion keeps her alive for a second. It's not enough. Selena Gomez goes down. Team Hazard don't lose anybody. And, and they will continue to receive healing denominate from this Lyra. What a delicious pick. And it's working so well in their composition. And now it looks like they're just going to turn their attention onto this sentry. No fear, just going in. Knowing that Personal Selena Gomez, sentry. the uh, the raw damage source that comes out of Fox is now down. And uh, Slata going to try to hold off the lane up here. But you know, again, even a little bit of damage on that turret is damage that will never be healed up. Just looks like they're actually going to get any now that Selena's back. Uh, but yeah, that was a great fight for Hazard. They juggled aggro so well. Now Selena jumped in, but Erica moves in intensely, finding the damage turret shot. Probably going to take it down. No, it's not. From Elsar cancels up Slata. But a nice core charge will find the kill. Erwin able to find that kill there. So that's two kills. The only two kills for Echo Fox going the way of Erwin at this point. We're 12 minutes in, and the pressure is on here. Hello Kitty and Naisu hanging around. Both teams have Fountain. They have their Atlas Pauldrons ready to go, but Hazard is going to go ahead and back up on this map here. 
Yeah, gonna go ahead and look to get some shopping done. They are up four to two off of the uh, the back of a a long rotation out of them actually between that fight, taking the sentry, rotating back up for another fight. Um, but Hello Kitty, you know, has completed the Aegis, so really respecting the damage that Erwin can do, even if Hello Kitty is not the direct target. Obviously, those uh, those core overload stacks built up by Core Charge, they will amplify the damage coming out of the Prime Directive. That is an AOE splash around the actual impacted target. So Hello Kitty respecting that puts off picking up the breaking point since they've been winning the fights, gets some defense, and it will now look to be working into that breaking point probably on the next shop rotation here in just a couple, uh, just a couple gold actually. Just a couple gold. We also have a uh, double Atlas Pauldron right now for Echo Fox. That's going to be a great tool for them if they can get those down and applied. And Erica's been just diving in very aggressively. And so, uh, as far as items, Erica also picking up the, the Aegis here. So that'll be a great tool, mitigate some of that damage uh, and allow the Cruel to just go ham. There's that breaking point complete for Hello Kitty now. And if you remember that last fight, how long and drawn out it was and how much Vox was a part of it, then you'll really be able to, uh, you know, start to fear this uh, this box, his ability to ramp up in the fight. Obviously, you know, Selena Gomez has that ranged advantage, won't have that breaking point. All of the damage is up front and is also uh, mitigated by any armor. Now, granted, there is a bone saw. It still takes a couple uh, of attacks to really start to ramp up that effect. So that is something to uh, kind of make note of, as well as Selena is not going to be able to afford any armor of his own. So it, it does allow a little bit of an easy opportunity for Vox to build up that breaking point if he's allowed to uh, get into a face-to-face -face fight with Petal. Yeah, he definitely will be, and it won't take too many breaking point stacks to take that Petal down. I also think yeah, it's a it's very interesting situation that every player's been in, the one you, you mentioned where that Selena Gomez uh, finds himself in now. It's like, yeah, you are behind, but your damage output isn't what it needs to be, so you can't invest into any defense. Like You have to just continue to move forward. And it's going to take a lot, lot of faith in uh, this build, in this composition here. And a little fail trampoline over the wall, Selena. I don't think it's going to be a problem. They move back towards the lane. It was getting shoved in by Hazard, but this is Hazard just setting the pace, making the rotation down to Gold Miner. Yeah, I and mean, I think it's a smart rotation out of them. They can essentially force a fight here if Fox come down. Can Fox steal his way against? Uh, they're not going to get it this time. Erica able to secure that. So a nice secure for Hazard. Won't go the way of Echo Fox once again. I don't think these teams actually fight down here. But Kraken just spawning. I mean, we're 15 minutes in here. And Hazard, they have a nice little net worth lead, but it's, it's not too significant. No, not at all. And... It, it is a strong edge, though. I mean, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at. If we look at the uh, the captain builds right now, Slata has War Treads, Atlas Pauldron, and a Fountain Complete, um, and is just kind of now working into that fourth item, just the Dragon's Heart in the inventory here. If we look over at Dice's shot, he has four completed already, working into his fifth. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's obviously their head, so. Yes, they they have that advantage there, but I'm just saying Echo Box not completely out of this. Let's see how it's gonna play out here. Now Hazard moving forward. Can continue to set the pace here. Erica becoming charged up, empowered, shall we say, in the brush there. Look at the slow. That's so nice that uh, he can stay buffed up in that brush as long as he doesn't leave it. Now, Erwin, that's a termination protocol down in the jungle. It's a nominee. What happened there? Uh, um. Fun. I mean, style points, uh, flashiness, uh, quick way to clear your jungle camp, uh, misclick. I mean, it could be any of these, right? Alpha's got a virus. <laughs> there you go. I actually like that one better. I like that one better. This, the storyteller of Vainglory, Mr. Humanist, uh, gonna write us some lore about the virus. I mean, it's in Alpha. the lore, you know. Um, if you you haven't read, yeah. you haven't read it. Yeah, it's been a lore? long time. I've read most of the lore actually. It's actually pretty funny. As long as you know someone hasn't read the lore, you can make up whatever you want. And I made that up right there. Not a big deal. It's not real. I think I... We'll be marching down the lane. Let's go, Denominate. Can Hazard close this out here? Uh, Hazard could look to do so. Um, they have a ways to go. There's four turrets that stand between them and victory. They have to find a clean fight here uh, to do so. And um, 
No, we really haven't seen a clean fight out of either of these teams. No, it's been able, when someone picks up a kill, it's usually returned right away, and then they, they kind of dissipate from there. So if Hello kill Kitty can build up the stacks, maybe. Hello Killy. He moves into the Arcane Passage looking uh, for a target here now. The Gauntlet's down. Is this Hazard actually trapped in? A Prime Directive in? Erwin trying to find some damage. Thinks about it. Repositions backwards. They still have uh, this Kraken to deal with him. Erica, are you trolling me with the recoil? Yes, you are. Hanging out. Hazard still ready to fight now. Bulwark's down. Canceling out any mobility from Echo Fox. They can now move in if they want. This Kraken's dropping low. Hazard, if they hang around, they're in danger of being engaged on. I don't know if it's really danger, but obviously the threat of a fight is there. And they're going to get the choke point turret down, and that's a huge spike. Even though they weren't able to get a kill, they have so much objective advantage. They've also increased their gold lead to around 5,000 at this point. So they're going to be a couple items ahead all around the board, and that's, that's a pretty comfortable spot to be in. Hello Kitty has actually foregone getting any armor, and is now working into a critical fourth offensive item. Yeah. to be able to just burst onto this pedal, which is going to allow him to build up the breaking point actually quite quickly. Um, you know, like again, that. because Selena doesn't have any armor, but he's also going to put himself in a position where Selena can, you know, poke him out from a range, and he won't be able to negate any of that. What it has done is it, it has made Selena's bone saw, I mean, even more worthless in this scenario because there's not a metal jack on the box who is going to be your main target. Yep. So, you know, Selena, you know, again, going that bone saw for the third or fourth item would have been a little bit more beneficial because maybe at that point, Hello Kitty, you know, knows the amount of burst that Selena Gomez is able to put out. But because this build took a little bit longer to ramp up, uh, they saw the bone saw come out early, which discourages that armor purchase. And it's almost a wasted item out of Selena now. Well, Selena's completed the breaking point. Now you imagine that this pedal just wants a weapon and a fusion and is ready to actually take a fight. It, are they going to take a fight before this actually happens? No flares come out. Echo Fox know what's going on. Nice, you may be getting positioned for an arcing passage behind with Bulwark and, and the engage to follow. Uh, they are setting up here now, moving forward. Uh, so there's the arcade passage, there's the board. They're trying to get onto the pedal, but the pe pedal kiting backwards. They turn, they converge right onto the alpha, then switch right back from Hell's Heart and all the damage they need takes down Selena. Now, Hazard chase forward. Echo Fox running uh, with her tail between their legs, and this is Hazard just taking control of this game. That absolutely is looking to be that way. And now it's Selena Gomez down for 30 seconds. They can look to turn their attention onto this Kraken. Even if they don't secure the Kraken, even if Fox comes to contest, they're down their main damage source for another 20 seconds. It can be Hazard quickly turning their attention onto Fox. And again, when Alpha's the only one in a fight, it is very easy to focus and take her down and not allow her to put out a whole lot of damage in return, but that's Kraken, and this could be game for Hazard if they if they don't get a little bit too ahead of themselves, and this could be the end of the road for Echo Fox. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, this is a tough situation to be in here. Echo Fox backs against the wall right now. Hazard will be pushing forward. It feels like Echo Fox need to take a fight very soon, and they need to make it an excellent fight. But, uh, dare we say a perfect fight. Erica setting up, looking for that From Hell's Heart. They're ready to engage. We saw the Arcane Passage. There it is. Bulwark's down. Nowhere to go. They're onto the pedal. Wait for it. Comes down over the top. Trampoline backside. This is uh, Selena staying alive long enough. Starting to build a couple breaking points. Stacks Gauntlet's down. Maybe not the one you wanted there. Erwin, able to move back, was getting lit up. Breaking point was stacking up hard for Erica and Hello Kitty there. Now, Kraken finally in the base on to the Vein Crystal turret here. Will be one remaining as this one gets taken down very quickly. Erwin tries to be the frontline force team, gets the Vanguard moves in. Atlas Baldrins down actually onto most of both teams here. Attack speed slowed down. Prime Directive in, a little bit of AoE damage, but this is Termination Protocol going to be coming out. They're actually able to take down Hello Kitty. Maybe Echo Fox finding a little bit of an advantage. Erica building up the breaking point stack is on to Erwin. Erwin will be rebooting, switches over to Selena, takes him down. Echo Fox, you're on <laughs> your last leg here. It looks like your leg's about to be kicked out from underneath you. You could team fight or you could just go for the Vein Crystal. What's the play? 20 breaking point stacks. Let's get some kills. I got some life steal. And this is my Spectral Smite. Erwin is about to get put down to bed. And Eric is going to take him down. The Kraken will take down the Vein Crystal as Echo Fox fall to Team Hazard.
again. What a crazy last fight. Echo Fox actually found a decent opportunity where they were able to kill Hello Kitty. But then Eric Kane made such a smart play. As you mentioned, building up that breaking point, stacking on Erwin, then quickly used that dead man's rush to close on to pedal. And with all those breaking point stacks, was able to just delete Selena. And then without the damage of pedal, Again, the Alpha is always going to lose that 1v1 or 2v2 scenario against a Krull, and that's Hazard taking another 2-0 victory over Echo Fox. This was not the dream scenario, I don't think, for Echo Fox. Uh, it, it felt like Erwin was, was really trying to do more than he needed to in a lot of these fights, and I don't know, I'm really curious to hear what our analysts have to say when, when they do break it down for us, but... Just didn't. It felt like the pedal build was a bit of, a bit of a miss for me, but maybe Selena was uh, kind of had had other plans than how it did unfold here today. Yeah, definitely felt like a hit and a miss. I mean, the bone saw first again discourages the use of armor, also pushes the pedal's power spike way back into the game. Way back. We never really saw pedal have a huge damage impact except for that last fight when things were already way too late. It was too late indeed. Well, Munchables, go ahead and take it away. Break this one down for us, bud. Can do, my man. That was an end. Unfortunate performance coming out from the petal right there. And on the other side of things, Erica Kane on this crawl just had an incredible game coming on through. I Ultimates especially incredibly impressive during that one. We saw during one of those late game team fights just sliding around the side to throw that Hell's Heart on and managing to land it onto Selena. Just... Excellent play coming out from Erica Kane. Definitely uh, worthy of a shout out coming out of that game. Yeah, absolutely. Great job with the crawl, but at the same time, a little bit of criticism has to go towards Selena and this pedal. I 100% agree with our casters in that the bone saw is the first item. A little bit iffy to me on the pedal because yes, you're gonna, it discourages the armor build, but they're going to build the armor regardless. Like, it doesn't matter what you build, they are going to get Atlas Pauldrons to try and stop your attack speed. So you have to be front-loaded with your damage as a pedal because so much of it, you're, you're so squishy, too, that once they decide to target you, you're just going to get annihilated. So you need to have a little bit more front-loaded damage, whereas the Bone Saw is, relies about a bit more on building up, especially when you are also going for a breaking point. And then the other thing that I want to touch on was in the early game, there was not a lot of rotations down from either laner into trying to help out this jungle matchup. Yeah. So uh, it didn't get snowballed as heavily as it could have if the side of Hazard was being a little bit more aggressive with their plays, but there, was not, there wasn't a whole lot of help either to try and help out that alpha in a losing matchup. Yeah, absolutely. It was an unfortunate situation coming on through. And we, can take a few, we can take a look at some of the replays from that early game as it was all about snowballing onto Selena Gomez in this one. Erica Kane finding the 1v1 against Erwin, but with a crystal sentry there, it's never going to be fun. Yeah, definitely not going to be fun. But again, you see the matchup of Kroll versus Alpha. Kroll wins that, hands down, every single time. If they are evenly matched players, the Kroll will take that team, that fight every single time. And then once we got in towards the mid, link, mid game, there wasn't a lot of fighting in terms of like kills being secured, but there was such a great focus on to the pedal. And this is what we didn't see in game number one was ignore the alpha because she's going to take so much more work to take down. You try and get damage onto the pedal whenever you possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Got to get that damage on down. And we can see across the course of these fights, some of them were very close, but it it felt like Selena just couldn't catch a break throughout this game. And once that misstep happens, we could see that the team of Hazard was more than happy to punish that and really jump on top of that situation. And again, a lot of it is there's that ultimate you were talking about earlier, but the ability to get onto the pedal because of the fact that it was just the way these compositions worked, that Kroll being the final pick was such a smart pickup by the side of Hazard because it makes it so... You know, the Alpha is very much burst-focused. Yes, she can have some strong sustain throughout a fight, but she's very much, the bulk of her damage is mm -hmm. burst-emphasized. And you have a Lyra and a Kroll. They're just going to be able to sustain through the burst. They don't really worry about burst that much. So every time a fight started, Alpha would go in, would get a lot of burst down. It would get them low, but then a Sigil comes down. A Kroll starts life-stealing, and all of a sudden they're back up to three-quarters health, and they can turn their attention onto the, alpha, the pedal. That's why they didn't have to worry about the alpha 
until they already secured the kill on the pedal or forced her out of the fight. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about denying that damage coming out from your opponents as well. And it is going to be Hazard taking this one. We'll take a look at the end of the game as well, how they finished this one out. They'd already got a Kraken under their belts. All they had to do was put the final nails in the coffin. And this is a great example of what we were talking about. You know, they couldn't get the kill on the pedal, so they turned back around onto the Alpha. Once the Alpha tries to then re-engage with this fight as it gets later on in the replay, you're going to get to see you know, what we've just been talking about in that they focus on the turrets, they get that down, then the team fight happens. You see Alpha uh, trying to get damage on. They do turn their attention to the Alpha just because the pedal is so far away from them, but the moment that the pedal or the Alpha goes down into the reboot and pedal is a little bit too far forward, everyone just ignores the fact that pedal is rebooting and just rushes onto the pedal, takes her down, and then they finish off and clean up the rest of the fight and finish off the game. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic stuff coming out from Hazard. And we have a, a fairly one-sided series on our hands so far. This is not looking good for Echo Fox. Time to start to talk about the draft coming into game number three here. Things aren't looking good right now. What needs to change coming into game three to even this series up? That's the tough thing for them because they can't afford to let this Rona through. If they let Rona go through, Hazard's going to pick that up and be dominant with it as they have been all season long. So, you know, a lot of their draft still has to rely on banning away that Rona because we haven't seen any team, let alone a challenger team, be able to find a way to deal with Rona. So, uh, and Sky is the one of those counters to Rona. What's one of the few ways that some teams have, you know, put up a strong fight against Rona. And this is, I, I hadn't thought about it in game number one, but as we went on and now seeing it here again, it, it, it makes a lot more sense that they ban away the Sky because if Echo Fox were to decide to not ban the Rona and they picked it up, having that Sky banned away is just gravy for a Rona pick. So that's why the Sky ban is coming out from Team Hazard on the A side. It actually is just playing around their own personal strengths. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff coming out from Hazard and playing around their strengths has led them to a 2-0 lead in this series. Echo Fox are just a singular game from being knocked out of the challenge battles and going back into challenges for next season. They've locked in a Vox though, which is certainly a comfortable pick for Selena. And with ban and a ban on the Arden as well, we'll see where they're going to go with this draft. Yeah, the Arden ban almost forces the Wyver ban to come out, uh, just because you don't want to give over one of those top top priority captains at the moment without taking one for yourself. And it is going to be a fortress, however, despite not having Lyra. We've seen the fortress into the Lyra thus far, but even without the Lyra there, Echo Fox still wants this fortress pick, which is. A, a little bit surprising because there's still things like the Catherine, the Grace, the Lance, all still available, but they decide to go for the Fortress. Obviously, it can be flexed into the jungle instead of in the Captain role. And we've seen the Fortress Vox. This was something that Cloud9 was running very early in the season and yep. having some uh, pretty solid success, I'd say, with it. So maybe that's where Echo Fox decides to go. Maybe they take a page out of the Cloud9 book but they will have to contend now with the Black Feather Lance combo. And you, you expect something like, you know, maybe an Alpha comes through, maybe something else that has this, you know, the brawling type style, because that's where Hazard's, that's their bread and butter, is these brawling type compositions. Absolutely. I'm curious to see as well what uh, what is built on this Vox here, because typically when we saw the Fortress Vox combination, it was that double tornado trigger build coming on through. But we've not seen that as much as of recently. It's typically been... Uh, uh, the breaking point style build. So we'll see how this one is going to pan out here. Crawl locked in alongside this Black Feather, which makes you think this might be another double weapon power composition coming out from Hazard, but it worked out for them last time, so probably not too concerned. Yeah, the thing about the double weapon compositions is that it works really well into comps that don't really have the ability to build a lot of armor. And when you have a Vox, Vox is always wants to go for offensive items. Fortress, if it's in the jungle, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag, but it's likely to be a captain with the pedal coming through. Pedal, not likely to build much defense either. So I, I think the pedal pick is a little bit questionable for me. Obviously, they like the matchup of pedal into a crawl. That's where Echo Fox is looking to have that, that one matchup in the jungle where they can take advantage of it. But I was actually, before we got to it, I was going to say maybe a Kestrel would have worked there. Despite the nerfs to Kestrel, she's actually very good into tanks. And that's what the side of Hazard had drafted. But they, they're just trying to win the individual matchup in the lane. 
All right, well, we'll see if they can win those individual matchups because there's a lot on the line right now for Echo Fox. This could be their last game of the season coming on through here unless they can get a win on the board. What does Echo Fox need to do here to get that win on the board and to push this to four games? They have to just prioritize that winning matchup that they have. You know, the lane matchup is kind of even, can go either way, but in the jungle, they need to win the jungle and win the jungle hard. If they do not get a large lead out of this early game, then I don't see them being able to close this one out. All right, well, they had the losing matchup in the jungle last game. We'll see if this new matchup is going to do them any favors. Hashtag Vainglory8, let us know whether you think Echo Fox has what it takes to pull themselves back in, or if this is going to be a hazard 3-0. It's time to pass it over to Humanist and Denominate to kick game number three off. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, we've loaded into the Halcyon fold and we've got Team Hazard up against Echo Fox here. And uh, Team Hazard looking very strong in this long best of five series thus far up two games here. Denominate, can Echo Fox pull themselves back? Yeah, they definitely can, and they have a good opportunity to do so. Selena Gomez is on a comfortable pick for him on this Vox, as well as Erwin and Slada are on a good matchup on the uh, Fortress and the Pebble into the Krull in this jungle, into a triple melee composition. They just do have to watch out for Nysa's shot here on this Lance, who, you know, had a great performance in game number one. Oh, yeah. be looking to repeat that one up. And, uh, you know, even though it is a double range composition, you don't run into uh, as much of an opportunity to get those big triple stuns down. You can provide your your team a lot of time where Petals Munions, uh, you know, might not be the biggest threat. Whoa, nice! Uh, getting taken down. Echo Fox fighting first blood, looking for second blood. They'll go for Hello Kitty. Interesting fact about Hello Kitty we can talk about later. The nominee, <laughs> Erica, uh, trapped down in that shot brush, taken down. Echo Fox finding two kills early on, almost canceling the recall there. What, what's going on? Echo Fox turned up. Well, again, this pedal in the early game just has such a huge advantage against melee characters. Hello, Hazard is all melee. Nice shot came out a little bit too far. He got punished very quickly for it by the side of Echo Fox. And one kill for Erwin, one kill for Selena Gomez. It's going to be Fox taking up two and taking nearly a thousand gold lead here in just under two minutes. <laughs> Big plays indeed a lot of a lot of money to be had up in the lane as well hello kitty will finally make his way up in the lane i'm excited to see uh what uh what hello can do on this black feather it's pretty impressive uh uh laning he's doing it earlier right now oh, erica kane yeah down in the jungle actually even more aggression now this is you, you've gone too far right erica the spectre smite will come through but you you've gone too far he's going to be punished for his actions here will he actually nice who finally lining up the gift while well, moving in now nice you're in a bad place dragon blood contract comes through and echo fox find a third kill how about a trampoline forward and a double kill for erwin erwin now three zero and one two two and a half minutes in here selena gomez low in the lane but echo fox feeling good yeah, I, I'm trying to find the nice way to put that was a questionable play at best out of Dragon Blood contract down. H Hello Kitty getting lit up here. Is that the healing flask even coming out with trampoline forward? Erwin will take him down. The Fane of Heart coming right back at Erwin. Erwin doesn't care. Stares right into the face of danger. Erwin starting this game off huge 4 0 and 1 already. We have 100% kill participation. <laughs> spell it. Just spell it. <laughs> anyway, 100% kill participation on Erwin and Slada. So you can really show what they're able to get off of these rotations together. Uh, obviously, Slada able to put down that mortal wound out of the uh, Law of the Claw. And that's going to allow a little bit of additional proc damage that the pedal is allowed or uh, able to put off on top of the fact that the Munions with this much crystal power have such a huge advantage early on. So, you know, Echo Fox, you know, as they mentioned it on the desk, they need to take a lead early. Nice they need to get over over this crawl, and they've done a good job doing so. Yes, they definitely have. And Erwin doing a lot of damage here. Now, Hazard has to rotate down his three. Slade to pop the ceiling class. Two man impel coming out of Nysa. Get the wall back. Eric finding the first kill now. Looking for more. Erwin, you're low. Hello moves forward with the boots. Actually trying to get on target, but takes a lot of damage from Selena, who did drop down as well. Rotations are nice. Selena will save Erwin's life. 
Yeah, it's a good start right now, especially that Fox was able to get out alive. They didn't get the kill onto Hello Kitty or nice shot, but uh, Irwin didn't pay his life either. And Irwin's starting to be a pretty sizable bounty. So if anybody's going to drop right now, you don't want it to be Irwin because that's going to be a little bit of additional gold going back into the pockets of, uh, of Hazard. And when you're down 2-0 right now, you're on your last lifeline. Yep. You don't want to give any edge to the team that beat you so convincingly in the first two games you've come back strong here in game three box have a composition that sh that i think is better that i think should win out nice shot oh nice shot I and mean, you can see where they potentially could have dove uh, definitely found that kill but They'll let it go. They're not going to take that turret damage, and they're going to go in looking for this turret here. In fact, nice who shot very low. Doesn't have a healing flask. He's only got the protector contract. It means he's going to try and have his other teammates on the front line there. Erica getting lit up as Slater drops down with Irwin into the jungle. Echo Fox in full control. Slater, he gets that lob the claw out here. They're going to fight over this mid. Crystal Sentry moving in, trying to have a little bit of this action here. Erica able to secure his mid trian. There's some nice healing and will be denied away from Echo Fox. But Echo Fox doing good. Selena by himself getting kind of caught out here by Hello Kitty. And it's actually going to be a Rose Defensive over the top side. Selena, he's low. Sonic Zoom back. He's under the turret, but he will go down. Hello Kitty. And he won't take that last turret shot. He wouldn't have been in danger of dying anyway. A very nice, uh, a very aggressive call out of Hazard. Yeah, very aggressive call, but they find the kill. They don't give anything up in return. And that's, you know, what Hazard have been able to do against Fox in all of the games they've played previously. When Echo Fox makes a mistake, Hazard turn it around quickly and they capitalize on that mistake. Now, I don't think this creates too much of a window for the side of Hazard as Echo Fox. They're almost 2,000 gold ahead. Again, they have the pedal who has gone the Dragon's Eye first, is going to scale up in these longer driven fights, and mm -hmm. is very good into Kroll and into Blackfeather. It, it makes such a difficult choice for Hazard. Do you let Selena Gomez build up the breaking point, or do you let Erwin build up that Dragon's Eye? I don't know. I, I don't think they want anybody building up anything now. Oh, nice stun from Hellstorm. We'll come around. Boomerang all the way from Australia will hit Erwin. They take him down. And uh, nice you dropping low, holding the found though. A nice patient there. Oh, two man impale with just the tip. It's all you need to get the ball yeah. back. They'll take down Selena Gomez. Hello, Hazard. Turning up here just about seven minutes in, clawing their way back into this game. And uh, it's Erica who drops into the jungle. Maybe gonna look for a little easy solo crystal sensory mission down there. Well, Slade wants to defend the turret, but the turret. And it's defenseless. Slater, you're in a bad place even here. Nice who slaps him with that Githian wall. He's stunned up. Nice who moving back. He's fine. Has the fountain down in the jungle, though. Human, let's switch your camera. Erwin will be able to take Erica down. But not before Erica was able to bring down that crystal sentry. And Hazard, they take a huge objective advantage there. They get the first turret down, as well as it's not eliminating the jungle sentry, but you do get 125 gold now into Erica Kane's pocket. And you also get uh, one step closer to having a little bit more control of the map that will uh, start to limit what uh, the side of Echo Fox is able to do in the jungle. However, I, I do see most of these fights end up getting fought in the lane. But now, nice a shot. And you come through with the Miracle Steal. Nice suits is dangerous play. He almost got that. And the attack of the pack actually committed there. It's a pretty long cooldown for Slater, but I don't think Echo Fox are going to be too sad about it. They've been setting the pace, and they can kind of back up here as long as they don't get caught and just kind of reset when they get those cooldowns ready to go now. This is Hazard moving forward. They'll land the impale on the Selena. Hello Kitty jumping forward. The on-point will land as well. They're going to look to kite back here. Now Erwin with the trampoline. But Fireman man gets in wall coming out here. Nice uh, plays. Erica gets onto the front line but has to move out. He's too low. But Black for there has the damage. Finds the kill. Another Githian wall stun coming out. Nice. And making the plays for his team. Now Selena will go down to Erica. And Hello Kitty has the on-point. The Fane of Bart in the last hit for the ace comes through. A crystal sentry for dessert. For the cruel, Hello Kitty will move up into the lane. Hazard, a serious win there, Denani. Absolutely huge for them. They even things up seven to seven. They bring that two and a half thousand gold lead that Fox had back down to nothing. They take another turret, giving themselves an edge and all of Petal's jungle. Nice a shot on this Lance has come through so strong for this so time strong. and time again. 
These Githian walls have been perfect in locking up Erwin and allowing Hello Kitty to build up those breaking point stacks and come in with an execute. Hello Kitty but hated the men, but Erwin was stunned up. The MPL lands, he was able to trampoline back. Now wait for it, comes in over the top side. Echo Fox, they have a bit of an advantage. Hello Kitty, he's gone too far. Now they will be able to chase down. They have this fortress to nominate. They have the movement speed. Nicely trying to buy some time with the Githian wall, but it's not Double enough. Kill. He doesn't find the stun. A double kill comes through. Selena Gomez finally finding a little bit of traction here in the last few minutes of this game. And now Echo Fox, after taking two kills, will be able to get Crystal Sentry of their own. A really nice win for the Fox. Yeah, it's a great Crystal win Sentry for Echo defeated. Fox here. You know, it was a little bit of an overstay out of the side of Hazard. You know, they were already low from the previous team fight, maybe not in the most comfortable position to actually pick the fight there, let alone diving into the bush without vision. Nice shot came through with a good impale, uh, but it was dodged out by Irwin with that trampoline, and they were able to push a fight off the beginning of that. It just, it wasn't good execution coming out of Hazard. And, and Fox is a team you can't sleep on. When you do commit to something like that, and, and they have the advantage, they'll walk all over you with that advantage. And that's what we saw there. And now can Fox come over and do it again with this gold miner started up? Such patience coming out of Hazard here to drop off that gold miner. I mean, they, they had it down well below 50% there, but they just drop off. They know Echo Fox are in a threatening position, and they're going to move forward, try to gain the, the advantage in the position here. They have control of the tri brush. They force Echo Fox into their own jungle and move up into the lane with that said, but just really nice rotations out of Hazard. I've been very impressed. Yeah, absolutely. I've, uh, you know, got to really look at Hazard. Two men oh, no. in You're in a bad place. Get the wall. Irwin gets the lead. Of Team Hazard ready to go on points. Lea Gomez dropping low. He's going to look to try and kite this one back. But Hello Kitty, he can stick on target. Another on point comes through. And with the Atlas Balls from Selena Gomez can do nothing. How many Githian walls has nice thrown through this whole fight? But what amazing lands play coming out here. Hazard really just stepping up and showing that they are the real deal, Denominate. Yeah, they have, and it, you can't take anything away from Nice Shot here, and just how many plays he's constantly set up for his team. Slata, can you change the game here? Can you bring Fox another opportunity? Century eliminated. Oh, a two-man impel coming out of Nice. I get the wall back. Irwin's in a bad place. Spontaneous combustion trampoline him back, but now Selena, he's joined the fight. Can Selena find the damage here? Erica's pretty low as well. Nice. He holds the fountain. Hello Kitty can execute. Finds the kill onto the pedal now. They traded one for one as Lance goes down. Erica tries to get onto Selena, but Selena kiting back, doing a very double good kill. job. Selena will find the double kill. That poison chip going to work here. Now we're left in a 1v1 as Hello Kitty puts him down the black feather has advantage with that breaking point stacked up slata can only watch in horror as his team is killed in front of him yeah selena gomez is gonna get put down into the dirt but now you know they were able to return the kills this is something that's been going on a lot in this game is it's 11 to 11 right now but it's the objective advantage that the side of hazard have put together for themselves when they get the kills they make sure that they're able to push whatever they want off the back of it that crystal sentry is eliminated they have two turrets taken down but despite that objective advantage we do have to look at the fact that the gold is still quite even uh, a little bit in favor of fox but uh you know it despite fox having the better draft nice shot is setting up the plays where they're able to capitalize they're able to take the pedal out of the picture quickly and selena gomez uh, again with has a bone saw now not a breaking point on box that all tell build that we see on Fox time and time again, Poison Shiv, Serpent's Mask, and Breaking Point able to ramp up in the fights. Yeah. And there's not any real armor complete yet for anybody that you you know would have to be totally worried about. There's definitely armor developed. There are two atlases, but I mean, your primary target, the one who's diving you so heavily and has the majority of the damage, only has a tier 2 armor. You'd be able to build up that breaking point Immense and then transfer that collected. ramped up damage onto the other enemies as the fight progresses. Yeah, it does feel like if this fight lasts longer than 4 or 5 seconds, that Hazard start to have a pretty scary advantage in here, and Hello Kitty just starts throwing those breaking point stacks around, diving into the back lines, and Vox great at kiting, but this Black Feather's in a great place. Nice stun to start soft, Knight 2, ready to go. It's Slata, who's sitting in here on Hello Kitty, but Hello Kitty ready to stand his ground. I mean, this is a 2 versus 3, and Echo Fox, they're losing their lives, potentially Hello Kitty. Rose defense is back. Now, Selena Gomez, he's gonna look to try and kite. Erica wants to reposition. 
Uh, three man get the immune, but it's not not followed with a stun. Nice, so you're in a bad place. Now Echo Fox have a bit of an advantage. From Hell's Heart will come out. Three versus two advantage for Echo Fox. They'll lose one now. Two versus two. Hello Kitty chasing Erwin double down. Kill. You don't get out of this one. That is a double kill coming through for the Black Feather. And uh, Erica down in the jungle. Look at that movement speed bonus. Empowered by those shadows. Slada, look at Slada playing the real games, the real deep mind games by Slada. I think he'll be able to get out of this one. Yeah, and that's portrayed directly there. That that meant, uh, thing I mentioned earlier about that transferring damage going the breaking point versus the bone saw. In that fight, that was Hazard able to turn things around very quickly. They were able to stun up Selena Gomez. They jumped right onto him, and then Hello Kitty at 19 stacks of breaking point immediately turns his attention onto Irwin and obliterates the remaining health there on that pedal. I mean, it was uh, it was a Rose offensive hit, and then the uh, you know it was one basic attack with 19 stacks that was able to come through with a big almost 400 damage hit. Uh, brought Erwin down. Now this Kraken is on the board and the next team that wins a fight can take it quite quickly and uh, you know could look to get a good push off the back of it. Now Journey Boots complete for Selena. He will have another opportunity during these uh, fights to get out but uh, he has to be very cautious. Again, he can shred the armor of a single target that's not going to then transfer onto Kroll, or if you've been building up stacks onto Lance, that damage ramp up does not transfer then to Hello Kitty or to Erica Kane. Yeah, I'd be picking that item up every time <laughs> if it did. Uh, as you said, though, I mean, e even if Echo Fox do get this Kraken, though, I mean, they haven't even taken a turret yet to nominate. It's it's, it's uh, likely to, to be a much more successful push out of Hazard here, and Hazard in a great place. Overall net worth pretty even thus far, and we're looking at 13 to 12 as, as far as the overall kill score. We're 16 minutes in, everybody. This is Hazard just looking to defend lane and kind of just rotate like a mirror as Echo Fox moves between lane and the jungle, looking for an opening. Now, down in the jungle, there's that scout trap in the shop that they haven't cleared out, and let's see if they take advantage of that. I right, nice, he moves in. He's got to get the wall into the impale. Erwin's going to try and kite back with that trampoline, but they target it onto Selena. Selena stunned up by the from hell's heart. He'll get a little bit of healing, but it's not enough. Hazard have a massive advantage now. Erwin will trampoline over the wall, running away in fear from the power that is Team Hazard. Yeah, Hazard, you know, they've been taking advantages every opportunity they get. This particular one happens to be a kill onto Selena Gomez, and now we're gonna be looking to punish Echo Fox and take down a Kraken. They uh, have all the means to, obviously, the uh, Black Feather and the Krull, no problem taking that Kraken together. Meanwhile, nice shot. You know, just doing the smart thing, coming over, getting vision onto Erwin and Slata. You know, not too far that he's unsafe, but far enough that he can kind of bully them back and prevent them from trying to come in for a Kraken steal. And now, you know, 17 and a half minutes into this game, this is Hazard marching with a Kraken. They've already got two turrets down, and Echo Fox are on their last leg. This is their last hope of making it back into the Vainglory 8. They need to pull off a reverse sweep here if they want to get in. We need a miracle for Echo Fox to continue here today. And continue through this weekend and continue in the challenge battles all nicely. Getting lit up pretty well here. Dragon side building up for Erwin. And Hazard will hang around. They're just looking for that opening choke point where it's starting to fall. This is oftentimes where a team will look for the engaged if they're going to do it at all. Our Hazard just going to take one turret off of this push. Still hanging around here. Cracking very low from Elsard. There's the stun. They're going to move in. That's Erwin getting popped. He tramplings back with the bounty dug. He's able to stay alive. Nice. He drops low. He self fountains, but he will go down. Now Erica tries to stand his ground. Erica dropping low as well. Hello Kitty. He's onto Erwin. He'll take Erwin down. Erica stays alive as well. Selena and Selena able to take him down eventually. Now a two first one for Erwin and Selena. They're going to be able to take down Hello Kitty. He tries his best. Ace. Will be put down. And the ace coming through for Echo Fox. They'll get the gold from the Kraken as well. But they lose two turrets on that push. Only one turret remaining. Yeah, and even though Hazard lost out there on the actual fight, they were able to buy time for the crack. And you know, we were mentioning, are they only going to get one turret off of this push? Because of the way they committed, they were able to get down that first choke point or that first uh, main crystal turret as well. And with the position of all the objectives on the on the map, there's not really a whole lot that the side of Echo Fox can do. They will get the first turret, 
based on the ace wave pushing up into that turret. But I mean, we're talking about four turrets still in the way of Echo Fox versus one in the way of Hazard, as well as that first turret. Due to some recent changes, it has a little bit lower health, but it also gives your team a little bit less gold, 200 down from 300. So maybe not the best spike or trade. Naisu getting lit up in the jungle. The Wardreads, Echo Fox make the call. They take Naisu down. What a call out of Echo Fox now. The truth of the two, if they're gonna move in. Celicate that was marked, but they switch over. They take Erica down. Are they going to dive into the base of Team Hazard here? They have no fear, Denominate. Up to the healing platform. Dare we dare we say that they go to the healing platform? No, they won't. An on point, plus the healing platform will keep Hello Kitty alive. Echo Fox move back as a unit here. A very strong team fight call there. We'll net them two kills as well. They'll be taking a turret for their troubles. Excellent play out of Echo Fox. Yeah, it was a, a beautiful play coming out of them. They recognized because of the vision that their minions had on Hello Kitty in the lane, they saw a nice shot and Erica came down in the jungle. They quickly pushed that advantage. They were able to take down nice shot. Kroll has no escape, even though he has the war treads, you know, in his kit, he doesn't have any way to actually get out of a fight. Uh, you know, similar to how uh, the Vox has the Sonic Zoom to pursue a little bit. Obviously, the uh, the Truth of the Tooth coming out of Slata, and uh, you know, last but not least, the Trampling coming out of Well, the attack is the has come out now. Denominate a two-man impale coming. Nice to setting his team up. Did he echo the impale coming through there? The Boomerang connects onto Irwin. It's gonna buy a little bit of time for his team. Nice and dropping low. Erica as well. But they have the sustain. They have the gift. The Wolf are so nice to face. Slater will go down. Team Hazard putting Echo Fox down for the count here. I do think as Irwin is the last man standing for his team. It's 17 to 17, but this is Team Hazard's game. It definitely is, and you know, now with them starting up this Kraken, this is an easy uh, win opportunity for them. Obviously, with the Kraken marching down the lane, they can play it safe, they can stick behind the Kraken, they can look for any window of opportunity where they're able to take Selena Gomez or Irwin down, as obviously Selena and Slater will be up here relatively soon. And then once the Kraken actually starts to get close to that last turret, they can quickly turn their attention, they can dive onto that turret, and they'll be able to uh, bring that turret down fairly quickly and then just Burr. turn their attention onto the uh, onto the Bane Crystal from there. Erwin, you're playing game far forward, my friend. He's setting up the minefield. It's, you know, he's trying to debate Erica into this fight. Erica, ready to go. The Munions was getting deep here onto Erica, but... Not really any fear coming out of hazards. They march behind now. See, this Kraken is actually getting taken down fairly uh, quickly here. Hazard are gonna have to make some sort of a stance. Oh, two man impale comes out, attack the pack. There's a two man get the in wall. Did he echo the two man get the wall coming up? But nice and started to go down anyway. Very big play out of Echo Fox, but Hello Kitty, he's running in. He's on to the last turret here to nominate. It looks like Hazard to make the place in the Double jungle. Selena Gomez and Slater will be able to find a kill, but it looks like it's potentially too little too late. Erwin, he's on to Hello Kitty. Hazard have their dreams set to take down his main crystal. The crack is the last thing remaining. It's a race. Who can do it? One, two shots coming out. This crack is getting melted down. One more oh. shot. Get <laughs> it all. Team Hazard calculated. Team Hazard come through with a strong 3 0 victory there over Fox. Whoa. Granted, that last game looked a little bit sketchy at all points. I have to say that's because. Fox had a fantastic laugh and they were able to execute on it through most points very well. But in the end, that's Hazard once again taking down Fox. This time, the time that it really, really mattered. And, uh, you know, that's going to be Hazard now moving in. And they are on the lower half of this bracket because of their uh, loss to Tempo Storm last night. But they are not out. Wow. Down, but not out. My goodness, Munchables, Tasty Bacon, tell me you got to watch that one. What an incredible match in series. That was absolutely <laughs> insane. Kraken literally takes the Vein Crystal as it goes down. Simultaneous hit goes on through. Hello Kitty, absolute MVP of the series. I don't care what anyone says. That was incredible stuff. Absolutely crazy. And can I just take a moment to say how much I appreciate the fact that we had Humanist casting the end of that game. That just makes it that much more exciting and exhilarating. Phenomenal job, guys, on that series. But 
What a great <laughs> series this was. And this game was the closest that we have seen yeah. in this series by a long shot. I mean, we've seen... Uh, it has to be said, while Hazard managed to take these games... They were not clean games at all whatsoever. In fact, we could start at the very beginning of this game because it was Echo Fox that started things off. They had five minute, uh, five kills before the three minute mark in this game. They were off to a tremendous start and we could see how some of those kills came through. Yeah, and this was what we were talking about. They had to win the early game and they did just that. They used the advantage that they had, the winning matchup in the jungle and that's where they started winning from was in the jungle. They found the kills onto the crawl, onto the lance time and time again throughout this start of this game and were able to build themselves up a relatively comfortable lead or at least it felt like throughout the first you know i'd say about 10 minutes or so they echo fox was in complete control of this game yeah absolutely they did a fantastic job to start things off but unfortunately they couldn't quite keep that rolling for themselves they managed to get up Two five kills. I believe this is going to be the last of those five kills coming on up as Hello Kitty was caught out of position during the laning phase here. Selena Gomez happy to help finish that one off, and I think the kill went over to Owen in the end. But after all of that, after Echo Fox were off to such a tremendous start in the game, things just started to unravel for them. Yeah, and one of the things that you saw is towards the tail end of that replay is that they were taking that advantage they had in the jungle, the winning matchup that they had and converting that up into the lane and getting advantages in the lane as well. Because the, the Black Feather Vox, that's a fairly even matchup. But if you have a winning jungle matchup, you can win the jungle and then rotate up and put that advantage <laughs> into the lane as well. It's basically like investing your lead yeah. from the jungle into the lane. And that's what Echo Fox were able to do. They were able to turn that into then objectives and find themselves with a gold lead. But as you mentioned, just wasn't able to hold up throughout the entirety of the game. And once this Black Feather starts coming online, it is very, very scary. Honestly, it didn't take very long in the game for things to start to go the way of Hazard, or at least for things to start to get a little bit murky in terms of who was winning. The next replay we have was Hazard actually managing to take a fight for themselves. And you can see that the score was already evened up somewhat. Yeah, and this is the, the timing of the fight. You take a look at the gold just being spent by a hazard, immediately then go in and look for this fight. And you can see they dive right onto the pedal, ignoring everything else. Vox is virtually untouched, and they've already gotten the kill onto pedal because that was their priority target in this fight, was to take down the carry that had been causing them so much trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic stuff coming out during these fights and making sure that they are picking the right fights. But again, you could see it right there during that skirmish. It was so messy between these two teams. Like, these fights... A lot of them felt like they could have gone either way, and it was a lot about the, the synergy between these two teams, making sure that the captains could actually protect these carries, because once one of those carries goes down towards the start of a fight, it's so difficult for the rest of the team to actually pull things back in their favor and, and survive the rest of the fight. Yeah, and that's one of the big crucial things is the, the carry or the captain. Like you focus one of those two, the primary carry that's causing the most problems or you go ahead and target the captain so that they don't have that extra durability during the fights. And Hazard, they have been phenomenal at this thus far today, these three games, at targeting, choosing one target and just focusing them down until they are either forced out of the fight or dead. One of the two, and then they just move on to the next target from there. And that's one of the things I've been most impressed by with Hazard's gameplay. Absolutely. They have been incredibly impressive in this series. You don't have a 3-0 series without looking impressive, honestly. Let's take a look at the next fight. This was actually Echo Fox managing to pull themselves back into the game at around 17 minutes as they defend against this cracking push. Yeah, at this point, it was just... It looked like Hazard were just going to be closing this one out. It looked like they had you know weathered the early game storm and had found their way back in. But then you can't count out a Fortress. That's one of the things Fortress provides so much damage, even as a captain. And at this stage of the game, you know, you get to a fight, once it starts, you throw out that ultimate, and you can just turn the tides of a fight so well. They jump away, are able to withstand enough of this pressure, get to their healing platform, and heal up just enough to prevent the death from going over, and then they can turn and take these fights and get the bleed damage, the procs coming out from the fortress of bleeds. When you have a Vox and a Petal applying their attacks to your target that is marked as Fortress, they're going to get those bleeds off so many times yeah. over the course of one fight. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see another double kill that came out from Echo Fox just following that situation as well. Just managing to catch a couple of players out of position. But unfortunately for Echo Fox, 
it just simply wasn't enough to get them properly back into the game. They managed to get a couple of objectives for themselves, but they couldn't turn that into the ace, and therefore they couldn't turn that into quite enough. Yeah, and again, the, the other issue with that Hazard's composition had when going up against the Fortresses and the pedal in a, in a way too is they didn't really have a way to clear out these extra units yeah. that were brought to the table. The Munions, they didn't have a great way to deal with the Munions aside from killing Petal. The Fortress Wolves, it took them a while to actually take those Wolves down. So many of these times when Echo Fox won a fight, you see three Wolves still up while there's only two members of Echo Fox left. That means one of them is getting double teamed by the Wolves. And you just, again, those procs come through so quickly. Yeah. It can proc as many number of times over the course of the duration as you get stacks built up. So having more attacks, adding more stacks, means those percent health procs come through more and more over the course of the fight. And they really start to hurt once you've had one or two coming on in. That is just about going to be the end of your life. Speaking of the end of things, we could take a look at the end <laughs> of the game and buckle yourselves in, boys and girls, because this was one of the most exciting ends to a Vainglory game that I think I've seen. And that's typically what what tournaments like the challenge battles offer when everything is on the line. Players just pull out all the stops. And again, priority focus, taking down the Lance immediately, first and foremost. But the heads up play from Hello Kitty to just say, I'm just going to try and run past all of you yeah, and... Here. A great job there by Erwin to recognize that this was happening, but unfortunately just doesn't have enough damage to stop it from happening. And that yeah. has got to be so frustrating to know that you, you spotted out the play, you called it, but you just, just couldn't end it. Look at the timing on this. Look, as he swings, he goes down literally <laughs> two frames later on the kill. Two frames earlier on the kill, sorry. And they stay in the game right there. And the fights were looking better and better for Echo Fox as the game was going on. That is a heartbreaking defeat coming through for the side of Echo Fox off the back of that one. You, uh, that's got to just be devastating for the players, especially on a 3-0 victory as well. And... and not even so much that it's a 3-0, but it was an elimination game. Yeah. The fact that this is going to be the last moment that they have in competitive for months now until the next season begins next year. This is their last moment, their their final memory of this year's competitive for them is going to be that play right there. That has got to be absolutely heartbreaking. And I do not envy the position that the Echo Fox players are going to be in right now. It is going to be devastating for them. But on the other side of things, Team Hazard coming fresh off a 3-0 victory now. Fantastic performance coming out from them. Definitely a great way to step on into these best of five series saying, hey, these series are longer. 